Greetings from Mount Olympus and welcome into the drop spot. Great to have you here. We're talking all things Fortnite competitive, of course. My name is Adam Savage. We've got another fantastic show uh, ready for you guys. Obviously, this is the calm just before the mythological storm because FNCS Major 2 is on the horizon. We're going to talk about that. I've got a bunch of other things as well, but I need two teammates, two comrades next to me. And I've got the almighty Reddish and Vivid here on the show today. Guys, look at those faces. <laughs> look at those Hi. faces. You make me so happy. Oh, this, is, this is great. I mean, I, I want to ask you, both, how, how is life first and foremost? We're going to get into the nitty gritty of Fortnite competitive, but Reddish, kick us off. How, how, is, how is your world, how is Reddish's world right now? Fortnite, just Fortnite. <laughs> I play Fortnite every day. <laughs> I'm preparing for FNCS and I'm excited for, um, for, for this FNCS for sure and watch my friends as well, see how far they can get. Oh, Reddish has nice. practiced up to play the FNCS. Me and Adam, I think we'll just be watching just as we just have spectating. for the past couple of years. <laughs> it's a lot less stressful, I'll tell you what. From experience, I can tell you. But yes, FNCS is just around the corner. And it's like everything just kind of falls into place when FNCS is coming up, right? Like you start to get excited. All of the events that are kind of going on, whether it be the duo cash cups, solo cash cups, you just get that much more exciting. And uh, yeah, gosh, we're just a couple days away now, Adam. I know it's nail biting, isn't it? It, it always feels it always feels with FNCS, and it feels like it 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 just happened, but it also feels like it's miles away at the same time. But yeah. here we are again. We're getting ready for a for a brand new one. Obviously, meta changes, you know, kind of like play styles change, everything. You know, duos change as well. And for you guys, yeah. whether you're watching or listening here to the show, uh, you're very welcome. Uh, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff, obviously uh, tonight, including FNCS Major Two on the horizon. I want to definitely touch on Globals 2024 as well. Lots of announcements. Uh, with uh, Globals coming away this September, spotlighting some improving players too. And of course, the quiz, guys. I can't let you go with that. <laughs> Reddish is hyped. Vivid, you don't seem quite as hyped. I'm sweating. <laughs> uh, I just got is nervous, it, is actually. It, is it zero for three? I, what, what's your record right now, Vivid? No, no, no. I think I won the last time I was on, actually. So so we're, we're on an upward trend right now. Let's see if we can follow <laughs> suit. I lost the one I did, but I'm I'm waiting for my revenge now. Yeah, well, this this could be redemption day. This could yes. be huge. This could be really <laughs> huge. Actually. Uh, right, try. let's just let's just jump straight into it. Um, we saw March thirty first. We talked about that actually the last episode of the drop spot. Uh, that there was this kind of like uh this this kind of like a uh, message out there in the in the in the social stratosphere uh, from Fortnite competitive saying March thirty first. Keep your eyes and ears open. Finally, we know now we've got our global finals location announcement. We're going to Fort Worth, Texas, baby. Uh, <laughs> British. I mean, this is exciting. Texas. September 7th and 8th, what a location for global finals. True. Not going to lie, a bit unexpected. We were, uh, of course, I'm you, so we were kind of thinking it would be you again. I heard rumors about London, so a lot of people were, were surprised. But if you think about it and who won the previous the previous one, it makes sense kind of for, for FNCS to be in the US. So I'm excited and I kind of really want to go, guys. Not going to lie, Texas sounds fun. Oh gosh, right? This is kind of talking about, oh, whoever wins FNCS or whoever wins Globals, the next one we're going to go to their home country. That would be pretty cool, right? Of course, Cooper and Miro winning that. And so we're coming to the States. But yes, we're going to Dallas. And I'm so excited for this, actually, right? You know, traveling the world for Globals last year, going all the way to Denmark. Now, it's just going to be like a, a quick two hour plane ride for me. Maybe I'll even take a, a quick cruise all the way over to Dallas. But I'm excited for it, right? The fact that it's finally announced. Everybody knows where they're going. Everybody can kind of set their schedules up to make sure that they can make it there. And gosh, Adam Globals, the event is just always so fun. Every single in person event, the atmosphere is amazing. That's right. That's right. I mean, London, Reddish, I mean, that would have been my backyard. That would have been amazing. However, <laughs> Texas, this is the, the I, I, I would love to see this. I'm sure everyone watching, listening would love the same thing. If the two of you there, went, we went, we went full embraced, immersed ourselves in the oh, Texas God. lifestyle, the kind of cowboy world. I want to see you two trot in on horseback. Just, I would love to see that on the main stage. I don't know about you guys. Mm -hmm. I, that, that's, that's my vibe. I'd, I'd happily put a petition out there. I'd love to see it. Vivid. Yeah, just <laughs> yelling freedom the whole time as well that I'm on the horse. Yeah, and <laughs> American flags, my cowboy boots on. We'll see if we can make that happen for you, Adam. I would do it only if my favorite teams win or do well. If they do badly, I, I, I won't. 
I, I, I like that. I like that. Like, there, there are, we've got some parameters here. There are some certain reasons the way that <laughs> yeah. if and when this happens. Um, obviously, you know, we, this is going to be an incredible opportunity at this event. So we've seen in recent years, we had like global finals in, in Copenhagen last year. We saw Invitational in Raleigh before that. Um, it goes to Texas in Fort Worth, as you said, near Dallas there. Um, but $2 million in prize pool, uh, you know, 50 duos playing here. Vivid, like the format's going to return to kind of like a, a, yeah. a former type of glory in a way. Yeah, that's what I love, right? Of course, if you guys remember from last year Globals, we had this three-day event where it was upper bracket, lower bracket. And then we only had one day of finals where usually in Fortnite events, we're kind of used to the two-day format, 12 games. And this year, I am so excited for that to be back. I just feel like 12 games is kind of what we deserve as an audience, right? This those extra six games, the day or the night break, right? You go home, you get a little bit of a sleep, you come back refreshed. <laughs> I feel like it just adds so much to the competition and I can't wait to see that format kind of implemented again at Globals this year. And it's crazy to see the leaderboard changes as well from day one to day two. So that's exactly. super exciting because you wouldn't be worth it necessarily if it was the same leaderboard day one to day two, but there's so many changes and it's so nice to see that in person, like being in the audience and seeing how a team that's doing badly day one managed to recover and day two they're going crazy. It's just such a nice feeling experiencing that from an audience, just watching people try their best and yeah, do well. It is, yeah. I think, I think, you know, I think, I'm sure the players would agree as well. And we've all been very, we've been very lucky us as three here, as I'm sure maybe at home may have been as well to to be in that kind of environment, like an in person event when it comes to Fortnite competitions. And there's just there's just a feeling in the in 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 the room in the arenas where you kind of you see like players love being kind of like face to face as well. Go, you know, you know, go, going toe to toe. Yeah. And I think 12 games, you said like, you know, have those six first games on day one, then you have a chance to kind of VOD review. Uh, everyone kind of like, you know, has, you know kind, of, kind of thinks about kind of how to re-strategize if things aren't going in their direction. And Vivid, I think that kind of adds to, you know, it kind of adds to the whole experience thing for them as well, the players. And that's what's important here too, as well as the fans, that they can have this, this kind of, uh, you know, to, to be there in person. Um, mm. And how you deal with whatever's chucked thrown your way because this isn't just a case of like these lobbies with you know, you know different teams from different, you know, different caliber teams this is like the best of the best all qualifying for this one event yeah yeah i mean the games are always very very tough there so you have to prepare extra for these type of goal events but of course first you do have to qualify which is why these majors that we're talking about the fncs is being just around the corner are oh so important but i think there's one thing about globals that we haven't really talked about yet and it's just the ability to go ahead and raise the trophy in front of a oh. in front of a full stadium, everybody's kind of cheering you on, confetti, everything like that. It's just such a cool experience. All the cool pictures that came out from Globals last year. Oh my gosh! Like, could yeah. you imagine if you were holding up a trophy, you would have a profile picture for the rest of your life? Are you kidding me? Like, it's just such a cool moment. And also, guys, there are meet and greets, so people get yeah. to meet their favorite. Yeah. Pro players, there, there's players out there who have like idols, right? Like, this is my inspiration. I want to be like him when I grow up, right? And then they get the opportunity to meet them in person and tell them that. And I know that means a lot for the pros as well. I'm sure a lot of pros love that feeling, get to meet the, their fan base, because a lot of them have fan bases, right? They, they, people that look yeah. up to them. So that's beautiful to see as well. Seeing well, them mean... sign autographs and take pictures, that, that's crazy. So, well, the, the, there's a massive line for you two as well. Let's not forget this, okay? Really. A line <laughs> I'll be there. You as well. You'll be there 100%. Yeah. Uh, I did oh, one okay. in Copenhagen, uh, Copenhagen, I can vouch. I, I, I love that. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I think you make a great point. You know, Coop and Mira, we saw kind of win global finals last year. It's in it's in the US this year. Reddish, hey, you get the victory royale. I mean, overall, you lift that cup. We go to Romania next year. I'm down. I think <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. We should definitely do that. It's a really cool thing. Uh, but for you guys, uh, you know, ticket information is revealed later in April. Uh, make sure to keep eyes and ears out, as we said, because it's coming your way. If there's an opportunity to go and you can go, do not miss your chance to go to Fort Worth, Texas. It is going to be a serious, serious party uh, September 7th and 8th weekend later on in this uh, 2024. Uh, right. FNCS Major 2. Guys, we've got we to gotta talk about this. This is this is this is days away. And this is what this is one of the ways in which you qualify to go to said global finals here um 12 global places up for grabs in this major almost two million dollar in prizes uh that's a, an enormous amount of money uh reddish but qualifying for that global finals as mentioned um that is what i guess, I guess our players are really striving to do here because to, to lift the cup to have that glory later on this year that's that's something that you can't yeah that that's a, that's a game changer for anybody yeah and for this edition it's it's nice because 
in the last events years we only had for example i know in eu we had two teams qualifying now there's more right there's more spots so more chances um so that, that will be exciting to see how it plays out yeah i love the fact that you brought that up of course eu there's gonna be five spots open yeah. top five now and then on na three spots and all those other regions will still be just one spot and i think that's the thing coming into major number two is so stressful right because you know every single major like we've mentioned before it's all about qualifying the globals right you you want to make it to that event at the end of the year and major two being our kind of like our halfway point because we'll only have major three left after this it's like well if you don't qualify via major number two well then guess what there's only one major left and i feel like that would add a lot of pressure on the sum of our teams that kind of expect to make it to an event like global so mm -hmm. major two i feel like is going to tell a lot about you know who will be nervous during major number three who's going to get that early qualification spot of course the globals i think there's a lot on the line this major adam yeah there really is there's loads on the, there's always loads on the line but i think i think you're right this kind of midway point in the majors where you you want to make sure you want to ensure you're in in there you're definitely part of the conversation uh, come september time um you guys as well um again to catch you up to speed on how the format works we've got two qualifiers with four rounds each from friday to sunday the top 255 duos will go to the semi-finals weekend which has upper and lower brackets like last season and 50 duos will play the grand finals that's how things are going to play out here um what are you looking forward to seeing in the qualifiers i mean vivid what what is what is uh what is coming up you're kind of like thinking that is something i'm definitely be keeping tabs on because the electricity is unmatched well, we'll kind of be running it back like if you guys go ahead and tune into the competitive broadcast how we did it last season was we were kind of just jumping around from end game to end game because again we're not going to have set lobbies during the qualifying weeks right so we're going to be trying to jump into as much as the action as possible and as honestly a lot of fun last season to kind of do that we saw so many games i mean so many pop-off moments towards the end of the game it was really really cool to see uh, but yeah, honestly, I'm just excited to see like the new strategies come out, right? The players have been kind of grinding all the tournaments, playing the scrims throughout the season, learning the new meta. I'm excited to see what they have prepared for us so that way we can go yeah. ahead and get into the FNCS and start getting excited again. Yeah, you mentioned new meta, but I'm also thinking about the new map, right? Because yeah. so many things have yeah. changed. We used to have medallions in Lavish. Now there's nothing in Lavish like that. <laughs> but we have POIs like Green and Underworld and are two and it's gonna be really interesting to keep an eye on that because i'm sure they're gonna be very contested and they're gonna provide that entertainment that, that we love about them. yeah i mean reddish i know i know that you're all about a certain battle happening at grim gate what can you tell us what's going to happen at oh. grim gate it seems like it's going to be just total uh, chaos from start to finish i want to cry when i think about it <laughs> because like you have Malibuka, right? Who just won FNCS. And you guys know I'm a, a Malibuka fan. Uh, he's also already qualified um, for Texas, right? So it's going to mm -hmm. be interesting to see how he's going to play that Oxcon fight. But the only thing is that I know he's getting contested by people like Ichuo and Yandi, and I'm friends with both of them. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying it will be kind of rough to watch. But at the same time, it's the best spot on the map, right? Because of that crazy medallion. So, yeah. I hope uh, they'll all do well. I hope they'll all uh, do well in Grim Gate. Love the fact that you're bringing up Grim Gate. It's a little bit different over on NA, or at least it has been for a majority of the season. Peterbot and Poyo have staked their claim over at Grim Gate. They've been getting uncontested, whether it be in scrims, in cash cups, whatever it may be. And uh, honestly, I think cash cup, I'm, I'm going to start the conversation off right there. Cash cups, our most recent cash cup. Wow, Peterbot and Poyo made a statement, of course, in a cash cup. Once you qualify for it, it's set lobbies, 50 duos, and then they play six games. Peterbot <laughs> and Poyo, they won the first five. They won five consecutive games Nuts. in a set lobby format. It was absolutely absurd. They were, of course, uncontested at Grimgate, every single one of those games. And then we'd be like, well, Vivid, what happened during the sixth game? Uh, everybody kind of got fed up with them winning every game. So we had like four teams land on them and they didn't make it all spawn. Uh, so they didn't go six for six, but five games is absurd. And uh, we have a team over on NA, Adam. That's kind of, that was kind of, you know, they're not really happy with the situation that was going on over there. Like, listen, that, that POI is just a little too good. The medallion is just a little too good. I don't think you should be getting that uncontested quanti is going to be taking things into his own hands, deciding to go ahead and contest 
Peterbot and Poyo alongside Byla. And honestly, I, I won't lie. So far, we've seen it, we've seen a couple versions of this happen so far. And it seems like Quanti and Byla are coming out on top a couple of times. So we'll have to see how that kind of pans out. We're getting into the FNCS. Uh, let's see when the lights are on, when it actually matters, how that fight is going to go. But Peterbot and Poyo are on a run this season. And I think a lot of people expect them to win. At the same time, I think if, if a spot like that is contested by only two teams, I'm, I'm like hoping both of them can do well. Because like yeah. I'm thinking about what Kiduo did in the last season. If you guys remember in FNCS, he was conned by a tier one team, aka Pink and Vico, and they ended up getting third and fifth place in grand finals, yeah. even though they were conning each other at a good spot. So I think Grimgate, even if let's say one team dies of spawn, then next game they can win with 20 eliminations. So. Yeah. <laughs> it would be interesting to see, and that's why I'm I'm hoping it. Yeah, storm surge will not be a problem, courtesy of Grim Gary. I have no doubt about that. <laughs> Wait, very, very quick, before, before moving on, very quickly, uh, quick, uh, yeah, another another kind of duo, different region. Anyone kind of like that sticks out for you both? You kind of like thinking, okay, this is one to look out for. Obviously, OCE or, or, or uh, whatever region it might be. Anyone that kind of comes to mind quickly to this? Yeah, I think uh, you know a, a big talking point actually in major number one was actually King and Phaser. They, they, of course, moved to EU, and kind of the question was, oh, you know, how well are they going to do in the EU region? If, if they don't do well, are they going to continue to, to compete in EU throughout the end of the year? Are they going to go back to the Brazilian region and try to qualify there? Well, finally, we do know, of course, Phaser and King are going to be competing in the Brazilian region during Major number 2. They did, of course, just get 40th last season over on EU. But the fact that they kind of made it to finals, made it to grand finals last season, everybody was pretty impressed with that. And uh, the reason why I think it's so important in this storyline to kind of like follow it and see if they can make it to Globals is because now that they spent an entire season over on EU, you know, probably the most competitive region that Fortnite has to offer that's experience for them. So I feel like they should just be better as a duo and individually because you know, they pay, they played in these type of lobbies. It's very, very tough. He was extremely strong and they kind of got that experience. So hopefully they can kind of, you know, use that to go ahead and make their qualification or their FNCS run over on the Brazilian reason a little bit easier. And then ultimately when we make it to globals and they are hopefully they are hopefully qualified, they can perform just a little bit better as well. And for me, going back to you, I think a team everyone is going to have their eyes on is Tomas and Queezy. <laughs> uh, you guys remember, right? The one point yep. champions again. I think, I don't know, one day I still think Tomas should play with Merstache because he keeps losing to Merstache by one point. <laughs> but everyone's rooting for Tomas to win an FNCS, right? Which is, which is really, <laughs> uh, really nice. And uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how, how that will play out for him this season with Tomas. It, ha it has to happen. Tom Thomas HD, I will, I, will not, I will not sleep well unless one day Thomas HD manages to it's get crazy. an FNCS title. I it's know. just not going to happen. I need this to happen. I want, I'm, I'm, I'm considering getting like cardboard cutouts off him. Anything I can do to help kind of like, you know, hi get the community hyped about this. I think this has yeah. to be the time. It has to be the time for Thomas HD. This year, for yes. sure. This year. I think, I, I, I think I'm with you. One point last time, so close. I think it'll give him, you know, knowing Thomas as we do, I'm sure it'll give a lot of kind of like, um, kind of uh, just in his sales to get back out there and, and, and finally get an FNCS title. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, we are going to be uh, <laughs> keeping a very close eye on what happens in FNCS Major 2, but not as much as a close eye on what's happening necessarily right now here with our fabulous quiz. It's a fabulous quiz. Oh. We're all excited about it. Okay, it's quiz time. It's quiz time. Um, it's actually not quiz time. Do you know what this is? Uh, Reddish and I actually, Vivid, we're actually going to be uh, forming our own uh, FN competitive biker gang. And this is an initiation. You can get through this. <laughs> oh, you, can oh, our my. you can join okay. our motorcycle yeah. club. We'll call ourselves the Grim Gators. You know, oh. Zeus's angels. Zeus, Zeus's He's really angels, got this whatever. thing planned out. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. This is it. Uh, but uh, no, what we'll do, we'll do. We'll have, we'll have a couple of questions for each. If you guys have never kind of um, seen or, or, or heard uh, Drop Swap before, uh, we kind of, yeah, we ask our guests here a couple of questions each, multiple choice questions. And we'll see how they get on at the end. We usually have a tiebreaker question. The person that gets closest to that kind of a question at the end um, wins, ultimately. Uh, we, which we usually play anyway, because it's just, it's just play time. Uh, right, this week, we're going to kick off with Reddish with the first Ooh. question. Reddish, I'm are so you scared. ready to roll? No. Is Reddish ready? Okay, here we go. Not going right, to lie, so. I, I don't even know the name of the new shot. Like, I'm, I'm that bad. I just play the game. But I <laughs> yes. Right, so let's not, I, I, I let's don't not think ask I do you the really first. <laughs> let's not ask you the first shotgun-related question. Uh, question two. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay, here we go. Uh, question one. 
How many FNCS have there been before this one, including all the invitationals? Ooh. Okay, how many FNCSs have there been before this one, including all the invitationals? The choices multiple. are... Okay, multiple. Yeah, it could be choices. <laughs> oh, that's Your good. choices yeah. are 19, 21, or 23. That's crazy. 19, I would have said 20. 20. I would have said okay. 20. Wow, I, okay. I'll give you a hint, you're, right? You were definitely in the ballpark for sure. I'll give you a hint. It's at least 19. Mm. Good one, Vivian. Maximum that, yeah. 23, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 19, 21, and 23? Yeah, exactly. I'll go with 21. Great shout. Uh, locking it in, final answer? Final answer. Okay, Vivid, what would you have said if it was your question? Mm, I think it's 21. 21. I think, I think it's right, yeah. It is not 23 yeah, it's definitely it's 21. not 19 it is 21 it's 21 yeah, yeah. it's 21 let's go oh can you name well the player? can you name the player who's played every single one of those 21 vivid again 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 uh, canada canada yeah canada All <laughs> he's played every single that is crazy made it 21 to every canada. single one yeah it's crazy what a joke of a human canada is <laughs> canada 21 crazy Three. all right uh one one zero reddish okay um so give it your question number one here we go since the first fncs in chapter one season x how many fortnite seasons didn't have an fncs since the first fncs in chapter one season x how many fortnite seasons didn't have an fncs is it zero one or two ah uh. Uh, okay, so it's at least one because of the OG season that we yeah. just had. And I think that's the only one. I I don't want to think on it too long. I'm going to go with my gut and I'm going to say one. If there was another season out there that didn't have an FNCS, you're going to surprise me. Oh my gosh, was there like a... That's, it's one. It's got to be one. Please be one. Okay. Would, Reddish, would you have agreed? I would have agreed. I instantly thought about the OG season. Yeah. Okay, mm. so locked in one. Yeah. The answer is it wasn't zero, it wasn't two, it was yes. one. It was okay. Fortnite OG. Let's go. <laughs> yes, one one. Nice. Oh. Okay. Wow. Well, I'm getting I'm getting kind of this getting sweaty here, but this mm. isn't happen very often that we could go into we could go into this having like a two two an actual legit tiebreaker. I'd love it. Uh, okay, uh, reddish. Yeah. Question number two for you here. Uh, how many players have already qualified for Globals 2024? but didn't qualify for Globals Ooh. 2023. Ooh. How many players have already qualified for Globals 24, but didn't qualify for Globals 23? Is it two, four, or six? There's a lot of knowledge to know there to answer that question. Good thought. <laughs> Thank you. Big Q. Big Q. So they called for this one. Yep. I mean, Maribuka was there last year. Um, Wheezy was there last year. Acorn was there. I would go with the, the what was the first one? Two? I, I'll go two, with four, six. Two, four, six. Two, you could locking in two? Yes. <laughs> okay. Vivid, where would, your, where, where would you have gone? I want to go four. Yeah, I'll go four. I think four. Okay. Well, one of you is wrong. And okay, one of you well, is yeah. right. <laughs> Thanks. The person who is right, though, it's reddish. It's two. Oh, Let's wow. go, reddish. Two. Let's go. Uh, That's it's Sian and Cadu. Sian and Cadu. Wow. Uh, two players those thus far uh, so who we qualified have, uh, for twenty-four. We have fourteen players qualified, right? Because seven duos, and only two mm -hmm. of them are new qualifiers. That's kind of crazy. Very consistent to everybody yeah. else. Yeah. But super exciting for those guys. I mean, going to going. I mean, going to Fort Worth later this year is gonna be amazing. Yeah. Uh, right. So reddish two two out of two. I, this is great. This is great. Better <laughs> I than did my last homework. Time, obviously. Yeah, did, did, did. I, I watched every FNCS for the last week, so I'm prepared. Yeah. <laughs> who, need, who needs shotgun knowledge anyway? I mean, who even needs yeah. it? They don't need it. Uh, right, David, on to you, my friend. Question two to tie things up and give an actual tiebreaker um, to happen here in the drop spot. Okay. Uh, question two, Vivid. <laughs> Across all regions, how many players will qualify for round two of each FNCS qualifier? Across all regions, how many players will qualify for round two of each FNCS qualifier? Is it 8,000 players, 12,000 players, or 16,000 players? 
the round two of the qualifier weeks. Yes. Right? Okay. It goes from round one to round two to round three to round four because there's four rounds. Round four is like 250. Round three. And I think the numbers are different as well. I think it might be like 1,500. I should know this number for the major region, maybe like 1,000. So It's just maths, man. The one you said, thing you probably ever should never do on a broadcast, maths. You he said, doesn't even know how many regions there are out there. What? There's six. <laughs> Jeez. British, um, British, British is calling you out with it. This is getting savage. What, I'm what were the? <laughs> what were the options? Needs to one lose. more time. Okay, across all regions, how many players will qualify for round two of each FNCS qualifier? Is it eight thousand, twelve thousand, or sixteen thousand? Okay, I think it's because I think the numbers are different for the smaller regions, and I think that the smaller regions have a thousand each. So that'll be 2,000 from those. And then I think the major reasons, it's 1,500 each. And then that'll be 6,000. So I think it's 8,000. Are you absolutely positive? No, I'm not. Because I, I'm not 100% <laughs> sure on the number. I should know the number, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm I, my guess would be 1,800. 8, 8,000. Okay. Reddish, where, where would you have gone? The second off. Was he 10? So, so 12,000. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. So. Oh gosh. The actual answer. <laughs> okay, it's see what he did weird. there? He, he tried to get some. So, the... <laughs> so, yeah, right? Wait, oh, yeah, I see. Wait, you don't, you slow down, sailor. Okay, <laughs> right. So, 2,000 duos on NA. Oh, I'm wrong. 2,000 duos on EU, and 1,000 duos on the other four regions in total. Oh. 8,000 duos, uh... which means 16,000 <laughs> players. It's 16,000. Wait, 16,000. It's players, not duos. It's players, oh not duos. God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. No way. No you got to listen to the question, man. I'm, no. I can't, I can't no. spoon feed you answers. Uh, no way. Do you know what? Do you know what? Hey, That's hey, fine. Let's just, let's just all just chill out, okay? Everyone's getting a bit excited. Mm. Let's just chill out for a second, okay? Oh, my I, gosh. I, I totally That's see. Crazy. I totally see. I'm... Reddish, if you're down, I'm going to allow Vivid, I'm gonna allow Vivid the, the answer because he thought it was duos. No. That's... Okay. okay. <laughs> no. That's fair. She's that's absolutely fair. not. I didn't listen what? to the question. No. Vivid's lost. Reason. I win. I'm oh, reddish. Man. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. So no, no, win one. He okay. said he won one. Before. Reddish. I never won. Reddish. Reddish has won two one. Okay. Congratulations, Reddish. But we'll do the tiebreaker anyway because it feels like it... on a tiebreaker. Oh, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Tiebreaker. Okay. Here we go. I see this the is the. Right? Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. There's, there, are, there aren't any V bucks, but sure, the fictional ones, definitely. Okay, here we go. Tiebreaker. Here we go. How? And this is the. By the way, this is just to remind you guys at home. This is the closest person to the answer. Okay, gets the point. Uh, right. How many reboot vans are there on the map? How many reboot vans are there on the map? That's the question. A lot. <laughs> well, on top one for an IGG. I see good you. answer, David. I see you, Vivi. Okay. Don't talk so, them now. <laughs> because and because because Vivid uh, lost to Reddish, uh, Vivid, you had get the first answer, and then Reddish can kind of go higher or lower on yours, basically. So, how many reboot vans are there on the map? Vivid, kick us off. Forty-two. 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 That's my guess. Forty-two. Okay. That's, uh, that was a terrible guess. Okay. I'll be honest. So, Reddish, what's your what's your guess? It's a bit less though. You think it's more? Yeah. I I was trying to. Guess. Yeah. Uh, I will say thirty-five. I said forty-two, and then I said it was a terrible guess because I was like, "There's definitely less than forty-two. So I think you're on the right track. You guys, you've got... let's just let's just let's just bear in mind for a second here that you you've taken you've taken a a total punt on this. You've got no idea what it's going to be. <laughs> it could be anything in any region. There's no multiple choice. The correct answer. Of how many reboot vans there are on the map is forty one. Oh, oh one away, gosh. Vivid. Oh my, dude, what away? Oh yes. my, that is mad. Do you know what? Really? Part of me was like, part of me was like, Reddish could just say, "Ah, oh, forty one." That's what I thought. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought dude, she was gonna say. <laughs> forty two. Like, I don't know. Forty two. I'm probably way off. You are that's one away, bro. Crazy. That's crazy. What? Wait, Reddish, I don't you know why I didn't say forty one. 
Yeah, well, I'm you're only right. six away, but still, like, 41. That is unbelievable, by the way. Great. Wow. What a great shout Very out. Good, right? that, those are good uh, guesses. You guys, you guys, that was a top, top tier quiz. Uh, <sighs> congratulations, Reddish, but what, what a display that was. Uh, great quiz. Thank you, guys. And if you guys at home as well, how did you get on? Let us know on socials. Love to know. Uh, that was um, that was my favorites. That was very very tight. I have nightmares. Yay. Great quiz. Great <laughs> quiz. Great quiz. Well, I'm reddish. Uh, right. Okay. So uh, before we wrap things up here, let's just talk a bit uh, quickly as well about uh, players to spotlight too. Obviously, um, we know we've talked about some of the kind of like you know the players from Thomas HD, Malabukas, and Peter Bots and, and Poyos. We, we mentioned all the kind of like the players we expect to do well, but we we've got players as well who are really kind of like shining stars coming through the rankings and doing incredibly well here. Uh, Vivid, kick us off here. Uh, players to look out for. Uh, who sticks out for you that you're looking forward to seeing uh, do well this season? You think? So my my eye is always on the NA region, of course. You know, I mean, this is this is kind of where I compete. It's where I kind of keep my focus on. And uh, you know, one player this season kind of kind of caught the spotlight for me, and that's because she made it to semifinals of FNCS Major Number One, and her name is of course Regs. Very very competitive player within the scene she actually it was uh, back in november she won a wot event uh, alongside moxie so very very impressive stuff there and then following suit with that you know made it to semi-finals of the fncs so you know boom she was in the spotlight for me i've honestly been tuning into her streams ever since kind of seeing like oh you know what's all the hype about how is she doing so well how good is she very very good honestly uh there's not a lot of times i can say in my Fortnite mm -hmm. career of being like an analyst or anything like that where i can like kind of like watch somebody and be kind of impressed with how good they are and and they're kind of like understanding of the game and some of the plays that they make and honestly i think regs ha has that she has the mindset she has the mind to see some of the rotations or some of the things that she has to do in certain situations now of course with a little bit more experience a little bit fine tuning of that of course i i really think we could see her make a run for an fncs mm -hmm. grand finals and i think that would be so awesome uh i oh. definitely hope we see that happen for her sometime soon me too i'm a big vex fan <laughs> but speaking of like the girls community and votes i also have uh, my eyes on alba i don't know if you guys have heard about her but she's like like you said regs on your region vote uh won the vote event right uh we have alba who also won uh, women of Divina event but she's doing absolutely amazing in comp um and in the Fortnite events, she double earned in one of the solo finals not too long ago, like Ooh. a month ago. And she won wow. two out of the three games in, in a solo finals game. And she's making all of us uh, girls proud. And uh, she also made semifinals in uh, the previous events here. So now I have my eyes on her and I'm really, really rooting for her because I would love to see um, these girls reach as far as possible from getting there. But as you said, they need more experience, a bit of fine tuning, and, and they can do it. And that's very inspiring. Yeah. Oh, t mass massively inspiring. I think I think your yeah, album regs both made the semifinals at FNCS last season. I mean, you said it yourselves, like you know, various vote and create tournaments and success there. Um, but very quickly from you both, strengths that they have that you think are kind of like you know, kind of what have separated them from the rest of the pack in some ways. What kind of like you know, elevating them um, up the uh, up the rankings right now. What is it? Vivid, something that sticks out for you that you think is particularly impressive? Uh, honestly, I, I tune in the reg stream all the time so if you guys are, are curious you know go check her out on twitch super super fun i think that the thing that she has a kind of you know can take her to that next level is one constantly streaming constantly playing the game you know what i mean always mm -hmm. just kind of playing you know that's that's really what it takes to be a professional player in front you just kind of always be playing and she is always grinding making sure that she's doing something streaming putting the hours in that's one thing that i love and then the second thing is just that she can have so much fun out of any situation like if something in a game doesn't necessarily go her way she'll just laugh about it and make jokes about it <laughs> and, and i really think you need that to be a top level competitor within fortnite because there's so much that can happen yeah. in a battle royale that is against you and the fact that you kind of make light of that situation is such a good trait to have so mm -hmm. th between those two things i think regs can definitely go further than a semifinals of an fncs with Alba, I think it's the same. It's definitely the mindset. She has that professionalism yeah. uh, in her and the pro mindset. I played an only up tournament with Alba. I chose oh. Alba because I was like, Alba is going to do well. She, she's, she's a pro. She will do well even in an only up. And she ended up beating everyone's record by like two minutes. And she, oh. everyone was so impressed because she's a pro. She took it seriously. She prepared and she shocked everyone. It was like a very big tournament. In, in only up map right 
but that's how you know she's got she's got that passion and professionalism and she she knows how to what she has to do to prepare and to be ready for for any tournament i think yeah, let's, and let's not forget how hard it is to compete and stream at the same time as well for True. these players too, by the way. It's absolutely crazy yeah. how, how, how tricky that is. Um, ready as you do all the time. You're playing and streaming away all the time, and it's 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 tough to do that, to entertain and to do it at the same time. Um, another player I want to talk about very quickly is well, I know you guys um, know about Marius as well. Um, playing tournaments, you know, I think really improves since uh, 2022 onwards. Uh, Vivid, what is it about Marius as well that kind of is, uh, is uh, you know, definitely one thing to look out for uh, that kind of separates <laughs> him from the rest? Well, I think the thing that's kind of put Marius on the map for sure has got to be his mechanics, uh, especially when it comes to creative, you know, whether it be just, you know, PG, Zone Wars, whatever it may be. I think that's how he kind of made a name for himself within the pro scene. And then since his mechanics are just that little step ahead of everybody else, you know, he's got a lot of attention, even from other professional players that are like, oh, uh, well, this guy's the best. Let me go ahead and actually face him in a fight in a 1v1 or something like that. See how good he actually is, right? And yeah. that kind of effect just goes on and on. So, you know, this player does it, then the next professional player does it. So he just kind of makes a name for himself within the scene as being the best. And it's got to be his mechanics that kind of stand him out from the rest of all the other competitors for sure. And with Marius, I think he's also just naturally gifted. He's from Denmark. Have you guys seen the statistics with the oh, Den? <laughs> the, There's so many. The, the, the pro players from Denmark compared to their population, right? Like, yeah. it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Romania is like so so much bigger than, than Denmark, but we only have one pro player. But then there's Denmark, who's made so many SPCS Grand Finals with so many players. So, um, yeah, just the fact that he's from there, I think it helps. <laughs> and uh, Mars is also a really cool person. Uh, he stopped by my stream. So, so day one, I don't know if you guys remember how badly he did. He was like top, I think, 40 or something like that after day one. And then day two, he ended up getting fourth place. And we were so happy because oh. in, in day two of SNCS, literally five minutes before before the game started, he came to my chat and I had like a hundred people wish him good luck. So we were all, we literally oh, just wish awesome. him good luck because he's all in his chat. And then we were rooting for him the whole time and seeing him go from like top 40 to fourth place, that was the craziest thing ever. So that's why I know a lot of people keep their eyes on him now. Also, he's going Underworld, so very good POI okay. this season. A team to keep an eye on. Um, you know, the players that are out there, you said solo cash cups as well. Because on EU's answer to Peterbot, I think Marius has too, dropping I think 39 eliminations yeah. in a win a couple of weeks ago, which is which is crazy, crazy by the way. Uh, but uh, those are just some of the players you guys definitely have to look out for. There's lots going to happen over the next uh, the next few weeks, courtesy of NCS uh major two don't miss a single second of it don't miss a single single second and you guys as well of course vivid you'll be there reddish you'll be tuning in watching and playing along as well i mean um where can everyone find you both as well online reddish kick us off where can everyone find you make sure not to miss anything that you do i don't like to do that but uh i'm reddish uh reddish on twitch youtube i, I stream every day if, if they want to see uh some um average gameplay i'll, I'll be there <laughs> And uh, I'm everywhere else. I'm sure they'll find me because they can. <laughs> and uh, you can usually find me somewhere uh, around Fortnite competitive content, just at VividFN on Twitter, and then check out the Fortnite competitive broadcast. I'll be there on the NA region analyzing, mm -hmm. or at least trying to, all of the great plays that all of the professional players do during this FNCS. <laughs> I mean, you will. And, and Reddish, I think we both agree. I think, I think Vivid has done enough to prove that he can join our bike club. He can, he can join our biker gang anytime yes. he wants. He's done enough. Just. He just He's made got the in. vibes. He's got, He's got the vibes. He's got good vibes. Good vibes. Rim gators. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and those curly bangs of his as well are just epic. I love them so much. So, so beautiful. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Loads to think about tonight to digest. Of course, you've got yourselves FNCS Major 2 coming your way. Don't forget Global Finals on the horizon. Look out in April, uh, where hopefully you'll find out more about ticketing and how you can be there in person as well. Thank you so much. I've been Adam Savage. Thank you for being on the drop. So we look forward to seeing you on the Battle Bus very, very soon. Until then, take care and enjoy FNCS. See ya.